In the wake of President Obama's visit to Turkey this past week, officials there say they may be close to a breakthrough in their long-running dispute with neighboring Armenia. A big part of the controversy involves whether to describe the 1915 killing of Armenians by Ottoman Turks as genocide, which Turkey opposes. Now there are signs that the land border between the two states may be reopened after 16 years. NPR's Peter Kenyon reports from Istanbul. For descendants of the estimated 1 to 1.5 million ethnic Armenians who were killed by Ottoman Turks during World War I, it's become a depressing rite of spring. The U.S. Congress passes a resolution recognizing the killings as genocide, and the White House rejects that characterization in order to smooth relations with Turkey. The comedian John Stewart described it this way during George W. Bush's tenure. Hmm. Resolution condemning genocide. Think you got to go yes with that one. This resolution is not the right response to these historic mass killings. What is the right response to historic mass killings? Historic mass flowers? Now it's President Obama's turn to grapple with the issue. As a senator, he called the killings genocide, and during the campaign, he promised to speak out forcefully on the issue. But in Ankara, President Obama said while his views hadn't changed, he wouldn't repeat them so as not to hinder what he called promising efforts to reach a Turkish-Armenian rapprochement. He was referring to talks between Turkish and Armenian officials that both sides say have shown surprising progress. Hugh Pope with the International Crisis Group says both countries have reason to put this problem behind them. In Turkey, the reforms that are part of the EU membership bid have also stirred interest in moving beyond the rigid denials of the past. In Armenia, meanwhile, Pope says President Serge Sarkisian is looking for a boost in popularity after a difficult election. So having a normalization process with Turkey makes him look good. Plus, the Armenian economy is in really dire straits. And uh, it's true that if the borders open, there's going to be at least some economic progress. Markar Esayan, editor and columnist at the independent Turkish newspaper Taraf, says it's been fascinating to watch the Turkish public begin to shake off decades of adherence to the government denials of genocide. And the civilian population has really been quicker to embrace what happened. The machinery of government has been slow to catch up with the public on this. Another key event was the murder two years ago of Harant Dink, a prominent journalist of Armenian descent who had written extensively about 1915. Amid the furious protests that followed, Dink's friend, Professor Cengiz Akhtar, took a step that was startling in both its simplicity and its impact. He launched an online petition, only two sentences long, apologizing for both the killings and Turkey's refusal to acknowledge them for over 90 years. It sparked a predictable backlash from some officials, but was a surprise hit with the public. In just three months, some 30,000 people signed up. Akhtar says it confirmed his suspicions that the people are more ready than the government to confront the horrors of the past. What happened in 1915 is so big that you can't hide it because the Armenian population of this country simply disappeared. (laughs) And they didn't disappear thanks to a chemical reaction. Of course, they were forced out of their their villages and towns and uh, many were killed. So it's overall, it's a disaster for a nation. But as with many issues in this crowded and conflicted part of the world, progress on one front may be seen as a setback on another. The president of Azerbaijan recently canceled a visit to Istanbul, alarmed by signs of reconciliation between Armenia and Turkey. The reason? The thorny Nagorno-Karabakh dispute. The Azeris and Armenians shed much blood over this piece of the southern Caucasus in the early 1990s. Since 1994, the U.S., France, and Russia have failed to negotiate a settlement to the Nagorno-Karabakh dispute. And Azerbaijan has been counting on Turkey keeping its border with Armenia closed to support its case. Analyst Hugh Pope says in the long run, Azeri claims must be addressed. But it's not clear if they will derail these first steps toward Turkish-Armenian normalization. Azerbaijan has been quite uncomfortable with the progress between Turkey and Armenia. But Turkey's argument is that we've done 15 years of closing the border, and this hasn't helped anybody. The stalemate is as stuck as it ever was. Why don't we try a new track and make Armenia feel more secure, and maybe that way we can get withdrawals from the extraordinarily large areas of Azerbaijan that Armenian troops currently occupy. April 24th will mark the 94th anniversary of the start of the Armenian Genocide. Many eyes will be on the White House to see how President Obama marks the occasion, and many Turks will be wondering if their government is finally ready to confront the ghosts of the past.
Peter Kenyon, NPR News, Istanbul.